Welcome to our 2022 Avenger 16 RD. Start in the back bumper here right in the end. You're just gonna reach in, pull that bumper cap out of there. Inside of the bumper, you're gonna find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears in the adapter here. It's helping you hook it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the back bumper here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things a bit fresher. And the cap just presses back into place. In this corner, as well as in each corner of the trailer, you're going to find these stabilizer jacks. All they do is just run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up. And that'll get rid of any sort of bouncer so that you see you got in the unit right now. Just keep things firm while you're out of camping. Straight up from the wall from there, you're going to find your cable inlet. Coax cable plugs into there, fires up at your TV location. A couple steps forward, you get the exhaust for your furnace. So if you're ever running a furnace, you just make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Right in front of that, you'll find your power inlet. So as you pop that open, there's a little notch in the bottom corner there. Lines up with that notch here. Press those in together, little eighth turn to lock it into place, and then you get the shredded collar in the back there to really lock it down. Following the cord back, you're going to find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are going to have that. You can just plug straight on in, and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter, so if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. Right down here, marked by that sticker, is your little point drains. So you get a couple of caps there, you just unscrew those, open them up, allows the water system to drain itself out. The purpose of that would be if you're leaving the unit for a while, you don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can drain it all out. Or before winterizing the unit, just drain all the water out before pumping antifreeze through. Ahead from there, you'll find your exterior shower. So you'll get a key just like this guy here. Stuck it on into there and open her up. You get a three foot hose, the standard head, hot and cold water. So the dog's out getting muddy, you can spray them off before he gets inside. Once you're done, just close it back up and lock it back down. Right beside it's your city water connection. Water hose will plug into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. Right underneath it's your sewer system. Press on that cap and just kind of give it a turn. And pop it on out of there. You see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose had. It'll attach the same way where you're just pressing it in, giving it a turn until it kind of clicks in. On the left is a black valve and the right is a gray. Black valve is controlling your black tank. The black tank is filtering your toilet. It's of course going to be your dirtiest water, so we'll dump that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. The gray tank's gonna be filled from your sinks as well as the shower. So we'll dump that last to help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Another step forward. Your storage compartment here. So it does see straight through to the other side. In here, you're gonna find your water hose. Inside of that water hose, you'll find your park adapter. 30 amp into there, 15 to a standard household outlet. in front of the unit this little black box here is going to house your battery so as long as you're plugged into that short part in the back or your seven pins your tow vehicle that battery is charging for you propane tank here standard barbecue style tank you just turn in that knob to open it up the other side here you get your solar panel inlet spear and solar panel plugs into there charges your batteries other end of your storage compartment here in here is where you're going to find your little manual override for all of your stabilizers. Little bottle opener by the entry here. Right below that you'll find your hot water tank. All of your controls for turning this guy on are just inside the unit. Before turning it on with either source though, you just want to hit this relief valve right there. Make sure some water comes out. Some water coming out of there so that you know that tank is full. It's safe to fire it up and you're not going to burn anything out by doing so. Once you're done, just close it back down. GFI protected outlet here, so you got one power outside, you got it. Fresh water inlet, so water hose to plug into there, turn on the water, and that fills up your fresh water tank. The drain for that tank is just right underneath here, so you get that little screw right there, you just will be unthreading that, and it just drains itself out. And then in the back, you get a little leash latch here, so you got the dog with you, you can tie him down. So you get your spare tire, straight up there, you'll find your pre wired mount for a rear view or observation camera. So making our way inside the unit, assist handle just up 90 degrees and it falls into place. Then we can make our way inside. Oh, steps, we'll grab that bottom step, pull it straight out, and flip that last one over. As you come in, first things first, right on the left there, you've got your fire extinguisher, so that's standard, pull the pin, go and shoot. Up the wall from there, you got your light switches. So that switch there on the far right turns on this one light. The rest of the lights throughout the unit are just on their own center push buttons there. So we'll just kind of turn those on as we go. Light switch to the left is your awning light on the side. And then right below that is your awning light, it's, or the awning itself. Just press and hold the bottom of that and the awning will make its way out. Once that's extended, we're gonna see a little black flap come down as well as a black metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna to wanna to stop. If you're to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case your fabric will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. 
So there's our flap, there's the tube, so we'll stop right there. Well, if it were to start raining, it's of course gonna hold some water anyway, so what you can do is grab either arm front or rear, just pull straight down on it, and then you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out of the head, allowing water to then run off. If you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in though, you just wanna make sure those guys are back out straight and fully extended. Bending them. You want to press and hold the top of that switch, the awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just watching to make sure that your fabric's over top of the tube. And another thing to keep in mind with your awning is once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in just because it's catching all that wind and you do run the risk of bending your arms. On the left side there, get your water pump switch. So as you turn that switch on, just turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Water heater's right beside it. So you turn that switch on, you get that little light up there, letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that light goes out, the sequence is started. It's gonna try that three times. If after the third try it hasn't fired up, that light's gonna come back on and stay on. All right, so that's the first try. She'll go again right away here. And that's the second try. So just in hopes that we can get that third one to work, we're just gonna open up the stove here, help it clear some of that air out of the line. And there we go. So you can hear that where the flame once that's fired up, and we can just turn her off. Right up top here, you get your monitor system. So on the left there's battery. So you can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, we'll go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. Into the front bed area, got a TV backer up here, antenna outlet, kind of towards the center of the unit. Got that button there for it, just turns on that little green light, letting you know that antenna is turned on. Cable and satellite outlet in the back, power outlet there as well. This cover right here is just access to awning power, so nothing back there for you to really worry about. Storage up top and right across it. Emergency exit over there, you pull that red tab on the left to get rid of the screen, take the handle there, throw it outside, hop on out. And I believe if you pick up the bed here, you do get access to that front storage compartment. Little Bluetooth speaker here, just because we don't have the dedicated stereo. You do also have USB charging on the side of it. In the bathroom, some light in here, again, center push button. GFR protected outlet, test on the left, reset in the center. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Hot and cold water, and a little bit of storage underneath. Just being mindful of your drains and your water lines. Toilet here, flips on open, flusher is just on the right side. Then the shower, you get the standard head and hose, hot and cold water course. Straight up above it, you're gonna find your roof vent. Turn that knob to open it up. Button in the back there turns on the fan. Kind of right above the door here, here's your smoke detector. And in the kitchen, you can get another little light up there, hot and cold water. You do have a mobile head there as well. A little bit of storage underneath. Again, just mindful of your drains and your water lines. Microwave up top here, pretty standard, just like home. And it rolls a little light. For the stove, as you saw earlier, we're just turning it over to light. Hit it with a lighter, and she fires right up. A little bit of drawer space underneath it. If you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time, access to your water pumps right behind those two screws there. 12 volt fridge, so as long as you're plugged in with your batteries charged or charging, this guy's going for you. Freezer up top, fridge down below. Underneath all that, we've got your furnace on the left here. So once we do fire up this furnace, you'll be able to see in the bottom left there a little flame once it actually fires up. Downside to this furnace being it is not ducted, so it's just dumping all of its air right here. So if you're looking to move that air forward and back, you might want to get yourself a fan. Beside it is a little converter, press the top and center, pops on open. All of your breakers on the left side here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it sits in the middle, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it. On the right side is all of your fuses. Whenever a fuse pops, you'll get a little red LED right beside it, letting you know exactly which one went. Right above our heads here is your air conditioner. So you have two low fan settings. The low fan is, of course, just moving air around with the low fan. High fan, same idea, but now it's just a high fan. Low cool is where your compressor will actually cut in and out as needed to give you your cooling. High cool, same idea, just now it uses the high fan. You'll notice in the back here, there is a temperature selection knob. 
that does have heat on it. Heat will not work in this unit just because we've got a dedicated furnace. There is no heat strip installed, so that's just cold. On either end is a little louver, so you can kind of close it off, choose where you're shooting your air forward or back. And then right behind our camera here, we've got our thermostat for the furnace. So with that slider all the way over to the left, that's it turned off. As we move it to the right, you'll hear it click. That's it now turned on. So all the way over to the right, it's gonna be max heat. Anywhere in the center is kind of your temp selection. So like I was saying, we'll just watch that bottom left corner now. We should be able to see the little blue glow in just a second. And there we go. Once you're done, you just slide it all the way over to the left till it clicks, and that's it turned off. Around the back here, you do have USB charging as well as a power outlet there. Like I said earlier, all your blinds are the same. They just kind of sit where you leave them. Emergency exit in the back, signified by the red handle. So just pull that in towards you, slide it wide open, pop on out. The dinette here does also fold down into a bed. So basically you take your tabletop here, kind of wiggle that up out of its legs. The table legs will then wiggle out of their bases. The table will then sit onto kind of the three ledges there. You take this cushion and this cushion, which should be the two sides, to fill in the middle and create your bed. And uh, last thing I'm looking for is an LP detector. So that guy is right down by the entrance there. That guy works just like a smoke detector would. So propane's heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off. And that's it. So if you've got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call, 204-237-7272.